All right, uh, good morning again, everybody. So today we'll start a brand new chapter from the textbook uh, or from the word text, and it will be about um, ordering relations. So chapter, uh, the previous chapters were devoted to uh, basically relations and special types of relations, right? We said that a relation is just a subset of A cross B, all right? So kahit anong subset ng A cross B, it constitutes a relation from A to B. If A is equal to B, then we simply say a subset of A cross A is a relation on A. And then we define several nice characteristics of relations to a point that we're able to characterize some special types of relations. Probably the first thing we saw would be the identity relation, which simply maps an element of A to itself. Second, we talk about um, equivalence relations. And if you remember, a relation is an equivalence relation if and only if it satisfies three properties. First, it should be reflexive. Ele every element must be related to itself. Second, it should be symmetric. If X is related to Y, then Y must be related to X. And third, it should be transitive. If X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, then Y will serve as a bridge between X and Z, thereby making X related to Z. So all those three properties combined together in a relation will produce an equivalence relation. And hopefully in one of the lab sessions that you had, you found out that equivalence relations are a nice thing because they, they induces a partition of a set into several cells, right? And it's not just that there's a duality property between equivalence relations and partitioning, because the converse is also true. A partition of a set also induces an equivalence relation. And probably the first item in your problem set, which will be live tomorrow on Canvas at 8 a.m., will be talking about um, um, that property of equivalence relations. So I will ask you to uh, declare a set, probably of say, um, uh, or of some elements, all right? Bahala na kayo mag-isip ko anong elements. Tapos, part A, magpapadefine ako sa inyo ng isang equivalence relation on that set with this number of members. Ano ba sabihin ko? Mula dun sa set na i-declare nyo, gumawa kayo ng isang equivalence relation, uh, say of... Uh, 10 elements, 10 ordered pairs in that equivalence relation. So you need to make sure that you what you will define is an equivalence relation. I will not ask for a proof, but siguraduhin nyo na yung define nyo isang equivalence relation. And then part B, I will ask you to find the uh, partition induced by that equivalence relation. And if I want to, to make the, the exercise longer, I will also ask you for part C, which is uh, to, uh, to, to build up a partitioning or to create a partition of uh, uh, the, the set that you started with and find the uh, equivalence relation induced by that partitioning. So pwedeng ganon yung going kong first problem sa problem set, which, by the way, will be live tomorrow at 8 a.m. and will be due on December, kailan nga ba yung sinabi ko? Sorry, medyo mushy memory ko. Uh, do you guys remember when is the deadline I said for problem set 3? Is it on the 13th? Tama ba? May nakakatanda pa ba? Okay, yeah. Thank you, uh, Rhea. Yeah, so December 13th. So dahil apat na araw lang yon, two being weekends, so siguro gagawin ko three problems lang. Tapos ayun, binigyan ko na kayo ng hint dun sa unang problem, okay? And then the other two problems will be proving problems which will be graded by your lab instructors, okay? And it would be about relations and functions. Hindi pa kasama itong chapter for ordering relations. This will be part of the final problem set in the course, all right? Now, so that's equivalence relations. And then last week, we talked about another special type of relations, namely functions. And we say that the function from A to B is simply a relation from A to B such that no two ordered pairs have the same first component, all right? So kapag ka meron kang isang element na map lang siya sa exactly isang element ng codomain, then we say we have a function. And then we carried on and talk about some nice properties of uh, functions. We talk about when a function is monic or one-to-one or uh, ano pa ba yung ibang terms, or injective. 
And then we also talk about yung pagiging epic ng isang function, wherein the codomain is equal to the range, which we can also say that the function is onto another function, uh, another set, kung ang range ay equal dun sa codomain. Uh, ano pa nga ba yung ibang tawag sa pagiging epic? Uh, we, we also call it being surjective. And then if a function is both uh, injective and uh, surjective, we say it is a bijection. Okay. And then in your labs last week, you, uh, or actually kahapon nga ba yun, uh, anong Monday, you talk about uh, uh, function inverses and composite functions. All right. So now we will add to our list another type of uh, another type of relations in mathematics, and they are called ordering relations or orders. So what does it take for a relation to be an ordering, uh, namely a partial ordering or a total ordering? Yun yung titingnan natin ngayon. And then we will prove some theorems about uh, ordering relations. And building up to some important results in set theory, which are the well ordering principle and Sorn's lemma, which we will discuss later. But let's see where we will go. I'm thinking of to compensate dun sa wala tayong klase last Tuesday. I might record a uh, lecture on the well ordering principle and then ask your lab instructors on Monday to, defy, uh, to discuss Sorn's lemma. Para mo cover na natin yung isang, uh, yung sang study guide. Na medyo behind na tayo. So that next week we will be right back on schedule to finish Math 101. So I think that, uh, I, I hope that would be fine with you guys. Oh, by the way, I already suspended the submission of the worksheets. Worksheets are now um, are now optional. I will upload the answer keys probably later today or early tomorrow. But uh, you can try it on your own and then you can do a self-assessment, look at the answer keys and see if you did the things uh, those things right. Okay, so now moving on. Sorry, if medyo mabilis. Sabihin niyo lang ako pag masyado ako mabilis or para na ako nag wrap So let's talk about partial and total ordering. So we start by defining what a partial order is. So here in definition one, we say that our relation row on a set A, so yun pa rin, meron tayong isang relation row from a set A to a set A. So row is simply a subset uh, of A cross A. And we say it is a partial ordering or a partial order. So, yan yung mga terms. Yung isang relation, tinatawag siyang partial ordering o partial order kapag ka nasasatisfy niya yung tatlong properties. Reflexivity, anti-symmetry, and transitivity. All right. I think we already encountered these three properties. And actually, we already kind of have an example of a set possess of a relation possessing all three properties, right? Uh, remember, reflexive siya kapag ka si x, comma x ay nasa relation for all x in the set A. All right? Every element of A must be related to itself. Yun yung reflexivity. Transitivity, ito yung binanggit natin kanina na merong isang element na nagsaserve as a tulay between two other elements. x related to y and y related to z implies x is related to z. Okay? Uh, the newer thing here and what sets partial orders from equivalence relations is the second property, anti-symmetry. Kung siya symmetric, siya isang equivalence relation. Pero kung ang meron siya anti-symmetry, tinatawag natin siyang isang partial order. So just, a, uh, just to put emphasis on the terms, ang tinatawag natin partial ordering o partial order ay yung relation. But if you want to put emphasis on the actual set itself, together with the relation, we say we have a um, partial order relation or a partially ordered set. Okay. A partially ordered set is a set A together with a specific partial order. And we write it as A comma rho. So kapag ka meron ka ng pair ng isang set, kasama yung isang specific na partial order, ang tawag sa kanya ay partially ordered set. Or for short, we call it a poset. Alright. So partially ordered set or poset, siya yung set kasama yung partial order. Okay? Yung partial order, siya lamang yung relation na nag-iisa. Or nag-iisa lang yung relation. Wala siyang set. Ah, hindi kasama yung set dun sa nomenclature. Okay? Now, let's review. What does it take for a relation to be anti-symmetric? That's it in definition two. 
a relation rho is anti-symmetric if and only if x is related to y and y related to x implies x is equal to y. So sa, sa symmetry, binabaligtad natin, tama? Pero kapag ka si x ay naging related kay y, tapos si y ay related din kay x, then necessarily si x ay dapat equal kay y. Yun yung anti-symmetric property. Okay? Parang malungkot yung anti-symmetry, no? yung anti-symmetric property. Kapag ka ang isang relation ay anti-symmetric, ibig sabihin, ang isang element ng set ay magkakaroon lamang ng isang mutual relation sa sarili niya. Okay? So, hindi pwede yung, yung two-way relationship. Kasi, di ba, yung parang two-way relationship, X related to Y implies Y related to X. Yun yung symmetry. Pero itong anti-symmetric, medyo malungkot. Kasi, ang tanging paraan lang paano, para magkaroon ka ng mutual relationship ay sa sarili mo. X is related to Y and Y related to X will imply that X is equal to Y. Wala ditong give and take relationship, right? Aside from having it with yourself. Okay? So that's what sets apart symmetry from anti-symmetry. But the nice thing, uh, the, the, a little bit of a, siguro, a uh, misnomer is that uh, if a set is symmetric, it doesn't mean it is not anti-symmetric or uh, vice versa. Merong mga, merong mga relations na symmetric and anti-symmetric at the same time. And, at meron namang mga, mga relations na hindi symmetric pero hindi rin naman anti-symmetric. So na, the negation of one doesn't imply the other and vice versa. Okay, so they are two different things, right? So hindi sila an antonyms or opposites ng isa tisa. All right? So let's look at uh, some quick examples here. Let's consider the set containing one, two, and three. Okay, and then let's look at three, uh, three specific uh, relations on this set A. Now, let's consider the first uh, relation, rho, and number i. It's a uh, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 3. It is not symmetric. Bakit hindi siya symmetric? Kasi meron akong, check natin, meron akong 1, 2. So, para maging symmetric siya, dapat yung kabaligtaran ay nandun din kay rho. 1, 2 is there, so 2, 1 must be there. And that's fine, nandun siya. But 2, 3 is in row, but 3, 2 is not in row, so that means this is not symmetric. Wala siyang symmetry property. All right? Now, next question. Is this relation anti-symmetric? All right? Let's check. 1, 2 is in the relation. Tapos pag binaligtad ko siya, 2, 1 is also in the relation. All right? So that means the two components must be equal to each other if we say it is symmetric, right? So 1 and 2 is in the relation, 2 comma 1 is in the relation, but X and Y are different from each other. Nagkaroon ng isang mutual relationship kay rho, pero hindi siya dun lang sa sarili, dun sa sarili ng isang element, right? So merong mutual relationship si 1 at saka si 2, because 1 is related to 2 and 2 is related to 1, and that's not allowed under an anti-symmetric uh, relation. Kasi nga, ang anti-symmetry dapat ang give-and-take relationship lamang ay nangyayari sa sarili niya. Okay? Hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng isang element na may mutual relationship sa isa pang element ng isang set. All right? So that means this is not anti-symmetric. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, a relation can be not symmetric and not anti-symmetric at the same time, because symmetry and anti-symmetry are not negations or are not contraries to each other. Okay? Uh, everything's good so far? All right. So if it is, let's go to the second example. The second uh, uh, relation row here is 1, 1 and 2, 3. All right. Let's see. Uh, the, the notes say it is anti-symmetric, right? Tingnan natin. Uh, 1 comma 1, element ba nung relation row yung pabaligtad, yung opposite order or opposite components? So yes, 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 are related, are in row, right? So 1 is related to 1 and pag binaligtad ko yung 1 related to 1, 1 related 1 pa rin naman yun. So ito yung titignan ko and look at this. 1 is the same as 1. The first and the second components are the same. So okay, so far it is good. Nandun pa rin yung 
may chance pa rin na siya anti-symmetric, right? Because this implies 1 is equal to 1. That's a true statement. Now, checking anti-symmetry for the second element, 2 comma 3. 2 comma 3 is in the relation, but 3 comma 2 is not in the relation. So, hindi niya na satisfy yung antecedent ng definition ng anti-symmetry. So, therefore, there's nothing to check here because hindi niya na satisfy yung premise. Because remember, yung premise sa anti-symmetry, x must be related to y and y must be related to x. And this will imply, or this should imply that y is equal to x. Now we have 2 comma 3 being an element of pro. So this guy is true, all right? True yung uh, first conjunct dun sa antecedent. Pero yung 3 comma 2, yung baligtad, ay hindi naman element ni rho. So this would be false. True and false, that will give us a false statement. False implying anything will be true. The only time a uh, conditional statement will be false if it's, uh, is if, if you have a true premise or a true antecedent implying a false consequence. So because then there's nothing to check with 2, 3 because 3, 2 is not in row. So that means uh, hindi siya kasama dun sa conditions para sa anti-symmetry. So therefore, we can say that row is anti-symmetric. Okay. Uh, I hope that's clear. Yun yung major gray area dito. Kailangan masatisfy niya yung dalawang conditions na to para magkaroon ka ng iti-check kung siya ay anti-symmetric uh, anti or not. Okay? Now, this is not uh, symmetric. Why? Though 1, 1 is in row, tas pag binaligtad ko, 1, 1 pa rin na kay row, pero yung 2, 3, pag binaligtad ko siya, magiging 3, 2, but 3, 2 is not in row. So that means rho is not symmetric. So example number two, anti-symmetric but not symmetric. Okay. Now let's try the third example. One comma one and two comma two are the only members of the relation rho. It is symmetric. Kasi pag binaligtad ko yung unang element, yung one comma one, magiging one comma one. So that's good. 2 comma 2, pag binaligtad ko, 2 comma 2 still in the relation, so it is symmetric. Okay? Now, 1 comma 1 is in row. Pag binaligtad ko, 1 comma 1 is in row. So, nasatisfy niya yung premise ng definition ng anti-symmetry. But the first component is equal to each other, meaning 1 has a give and take relationship with itself and only with itself. So, it's fine. Let's check 2. 2 is related to 2. Pag binaligtad ko, 2 related 2 pa rin naman na kay rho. And 2 is equal to 2. So again, 2 enjoys a mutual relationship only with itself. So that means this is anti-symmetric. <coughs> Sorry. So this third example illustrates that a relation can be symmetric and anti-symmetric at the same time. All right. So can I see some reactions if anti-symmetry is... Um, um, is well understood. Uh, yes, uh, do you have a question, Gat? Sir, yan, dun po sa number two. Uh-huh. Hindi ko po na-get yung anti-symmetric. Okay, good. Um, yeah, let me address your question first. Okay, di ba check natin sa anti-symmetry? Ito. Pag si X ka ma Y, uh, pag si uh, X ay related kay Y, Tapos nakita ko si y ay related din kay x. Dapat i-imply niya na si y ay equal kay x. Yan yung definition ng anti-symmetry. Alright? So I need to check if this is uh, true for all elements of the relation. So punta ako dun sa unang element. 1, 1. Alright? So I know that 1 is... So dito ang x ko ay 1. Tapos ang y ko ay 1. Alright? First element is x. Second element is x. So I know that this would be true, x row y, because 1 comma 1 is in row, okay? Tapos, pag binaligtad ko tong 1 comma 1, 1 comma 1 pa rin naman siya. So dito, ginamit ko naman si 1. Tapos dito, yung x ko pa rin naman ay 1. So 1 comma 1 is in row. So nasatisfy ni 1 comma 1 etong precedent nung, uh, nung statement. So ibig sabihin, true etong premise, uh, etong uh, precedent ng conditional statement. So, para maging true etong conditional, dapat eto ay true. Kasi kung false yan, malaking problema. Kasi true implying false is false. So, I want this to be true. But upon checking, 
x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, so therefore x is equal to y. So na satisfy ni 1, 1 yung requirement ng anti-symmetry. And we don't have any problem with that. Okay? Ang nag-cost dito ng pagiging hindi anti-symmetric ay si 2, 3. So check ko ngayon si 2, 3. Okay, 2, 3, ang x ko ay 2, ang y ko ay 3. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, itong unang conjunct na to, x related to y, x being 2 and y being 3, is true, right? Because 2, 3 is in the relation. So, this guy is true. Okay? Pero pag binaligtad ko yan, is y related to x? So, that means I'm asking, is 3, 2 in the relation? And unfortunately, the answer is false. So, that means this is true, this is false, true and false is false. So false yan, alright? Tapos false implying anything would be a true statement. Alright? So ibig sabihin, kahit, uh, kahit anuman yung truth value, kahit si y ay equal kay x, or kahit si y ay hindi equal kay x, in our case, y is not equal to x, so this is false. So we have false implying false, that is a true conditional statement. So, ibig sabihin, true pa rin yung condition ng anti-symmetry para kay 2, 3. So, that makes the relation anti-symmetric kasi yung conditional statement required dun sa definition ng anti-symmetry ay nasatisfy ng lahat ng elements. Alright? Now, Victor has a related question on the chat. Do we, need, do we check only the first element for checking anti-symmetry? Um, well, you... Victor, you need to do it uh, element by element. So, halimbawa dito, sa example number number one, kailangan nyo siyang i-check uh, sa isa't isa. So, dito, gawin mong first check. Gamitin mo yung unang element. X is equal to 1, Y is equal to 2. Then, i-check mo kung true itong conditional statement. Of course, that will be the same as check, uh, taking X equals 2 and Y equals 1 for the second element. So, medyo na do double lang yung trabaho, pero you need to do it element per element. Okay? So, pero yung baligtaran ay uh, parang nasa subsume na nung isang case. So, medyo nangangalahate yung trabaho kapag ka meron na babaligtan. Alright? But I hope I answered uh, Gad's question. Uh, may follow up ka ba, Gad? No, no, sir. Okay, thank you. How about uh, Ritzy? Uh, sorry, uh, Mayor Rose. Uh, sorry, I thought it was uh, Mayor. Any Hello. question? Sir, magtatanong lang po ako. Ibig sabihin po ba, pag nasa relation yung 3 and 2 sa number 2, it becomes not anti-symmetric po for that. Exactly. So, if uh, ang tanong ni Mayor Rose ay kapag kaan dito daw, dinagdag ko si 3, 2. Alright, pag dinagdag ko si 3, 2, uh, it's a check nyo, di ba? Punta kayo dito kay second element. X equals 2, Y equals 3. So, X is related to the Y. That would be true, right? And then, pag binaligtad ko siya, 3, is 3 related to 2? The answer is yes. Siya yung dinagdag ko na pangatlong element. So, this will be true. So, the precedent would be true. Alright? Kasi true and true is true. However, is X equal to Y? No, because 2 is not equal to 3. So we will have a true statement implying a false statement, and that is a false conditional statement. So ibig sabihin, tama si Meros. Kapag ka may 3, 2 ako dito sa second relation, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya anti-symmetric. Right? But with that introduction, the second relation would be symmetric. Right? Kasi 2, 3, pag biniligtad ko, 3, 2, na kay Ro pa rin siya. Okay? Uh, thank you for the nice questions. Anybody else? Yes, Mitzi. So, sir, for example, pa meron po akong relation containing the elements 1, 2, and um, for example, 3, 4 po. Edi, since hindi po true yung first first requirement, parang hindi na po siya anti-symmetric ah, anti, anti pa rin po siya? Yes, that's right. Uh, kung, kung ang example mong row ay ito, all right, ito, 1, 2, and 3, 4, this would be anti-symmetric. Kasi ang requirement, uh, in layman's terms, ang requirement ng anti-symmetry, pagka nagkaroon ka ng baligtaran ng mutual relation, uh, dapat 
yung first at saka second components ay parehas. All right? Though si 1, 2, wala naman yung kabaligtaran niya na 2, 1. So, ibig sabihin, hindi dapat si 1, uh, hindi natin i-require na si 1 ay equal kay 2. So, that's fine. Tapos si 3, 4, pag binaligtad ko yan, 4, 3, eh si 4, 3, wala kay rho, so there's nothing to check for anti-symmetry. So, pag wala kayong kailangang i-check, pwede nyo isipin, ah, by default, or the technical term is vacuously, uh, the, the property is satisfied. So, ibig sabihin, tama si Mitzi, etong row na to ay anti-symmetric. Kasi walang mutual relationship na naganap kay Rho. Na ang, na ang only exemption natin ay yung pagiging mutually uh, uh, related ng isang element ng set sa sarili niya. Pero yung technical reason nga doon, yung sinasabi ko kanina, dito ay x equals 1, y equals 2. So x is related to y, that's correct. But since y is not related to 1, the precedent would be false. And a false precedent will make the actual conditional statement true regardless of what the truth value of the consequence is. So pag wala kang iche-check, wala nangyaring baligtaran, then it is still anti-symmetric. All right? Uh, is that clear? All right, thank you. Yun yung ano, yun yung uh, medyo kakaiba dun sa pag-check ng anti-symmetry. May mga relations na by default nagiging anti-symmetric sila. Kasi wala tayong dapat i-check. Alright? So give me 30 seconds guys, hold on. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What's next? Oh, some examples. Some nicer examples of uh, anti-symmetric relations. Yung less than or equal to relation. The usual less than or equal to relation on the set of real numbers is anti-symmetric. All right. So technically, this relation, the less than or equal to relation, can be uh, written this way. This is a subset of R cross R, where in A comma B, is an element of the relation less than or equal to if and only if A is less than or equal to B. So, among elements niya, ang itsura ay 1, 1 because 1 is less than or equal to 1, uh, 2, comma, uh, pi because 2 is less than or equal to pi, uh, what else? 1 half, comma, uh, E. It is also in the relation less than or equal to because 1 half is less than or equal to to e, all right? Uh, however, 2 comma 1 is not in the less than or equal to relation because 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So, yun yung typical na less than or equal to relation natin sa set R, okay? However, uh, actually, this is also anti-symmetric or this is an anti-symmetric relation kasi remember kapag ka meron tayong A less than or equal to B, and b less than or equal to a, that will only happen if a is equal to b. All right? So, limbawa, c1, we know that 1 is less than or equal to 1. Pag binaligtad ko, true pa rin naman yun. 1 less than or equal to 1 pa rin. So, that means 1 is equal to 1. Then that's fine. However, this will not occur for, for cases when a is not equal to b. Kasi by the trichotomy axiom, hindi pwedeng si A ay less than or equal kay B at saka si B ay less than or equal to A tapos mangyayari na si A ay hindi equal kay B. All right? So this is one of the most familiar anti-symmetric uh, relations that we have. Okay? Now, another... Um, hold on. Uh, okay, so we already covered remark number five, I think. Uh Siya ay an, hindi siya anti-symmetric pag may nakita tayo na mutual relation na hindi naman equal si x at saka si y. That's one uh, quick criterion, a quick uh, check of your relation will uh, can tell us whether it is uh, can tell us if it is not anti-symmetric. Pero yung proof ng anti-symmetry medyo mabigat kasi kailangan natin siyang ipakita sa lahat ng cases. Para makonclude na hindi siya anti-symmetric, kailangan mo lang makakita ng x na related kay y at saka y na related kay x pero si x ay hindi equal kay y. Okay? For instance, in exercise 6, 
kung ang relation uh, relation row is defined this way, x is related to y if and only if x squared is less than or equal to y squared. This is not anti-symmetric because I can find two elements of the relation of the form x comma y and y comma x, but x is not equal to y. In particular, I can take negative 2 and y is equal to 2. All right, and you can check. If x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to 2, then this guy will translate to 4 less than or equal to 4, which is true, right? So that means negative 2 comma 2 is in the relation row. Pag binaligtad ko siya, ginawa kong y related to x. So I will have 2 squared less than or equal to negative 2 squared. So that means y is also related to x. But clearly, x is not equal to y because uh, basically they are inverses of each other. So that means nakakita ko ng dalawang element ng relations na baligtaran pero yung first at saka second components ay hindi equal sa isa't isa. Okay? So this relation is anti-symmetric. Okay, now I hope anti-symmetry is fine. Uh, this is the only new, uh, new property that we introduced here. So I think we're ready to look at some examples of posets or partially ordered sets, okay? Now let's consider uh, the set A again, one, two, and three. Uh, and then let's take the relation row. And I guess you recognize this relation row. This is nothing more but the identity relation on A, okay? Rho is uh, reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. And hence we say the set A together with the identity relation on A is a poset. Or we say that rho is a partial ordering on the set A. Uh, you can extrapolate from this and say that in general, the identity relation is also a partial order. Okay, kaya maraming property yung identity relations uh, uh, although it is very naive, napakadali or napaka simple ng identity relation, siya yung isang magandang example ng mga ng mga relation na halos lahat ng desirable properties nasa kanya na, right? It's uh, it's a function, it's um it's an equivalence relation, and now we saw that it is a poset or it's a partial order. Now, just to summarize also, the less than or equal to relation is also a, a, a partial order on the set of real numbers. Because we know that a number, any real number, is less than or equal to itself. It has the anti-symmetry as we discussed before. And it is also transitive. If x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z, then we're sure that x is less than or equal to z. Okay. Now, this is very natural. This is a, a kind of a natural order on the set of real numbers. That's why ang tawag natin sa kanya, siya yung natural ordering. O siya yung natural partial order sa set of real numbers. Kasi if you think of an order on the set of uh, real numbers, then this would be the first thing that will come to mind. Okay? So parang nangyayari kasi sa, sa konsepto ng orders, tinatry nating isulat yung mga elements ng set natin in a certain fashion or in a certain um, order sa isang, uh, isang specific scheme on how to uh, write them from a least element to the greatest element. And meron na tayong alam dyan, natutunan na natin to from elementary, yung konsepto ng, natural, ng less than or equal to relation which is a natural ordering. Of course, the greater than or equal to relation is also a partial order on the set of real numbers. You can quickly check that it is reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive as well. Okay. Now, I guess I forgot to mention earlier that we already saw another poset, but this uh, poset would be uh, on the power set of A together with the inclusion relation. Okay. So consider the set. A containing the letters A, B, and C. And then we consider the power set of A. Remember, the power set of A is just a set of all subsets of A. And we know how many there are. There are two to the power n elements of the power set. Okay. Dahil meron tayong tatlong elements ng set A, so meron tayong walong subsets. So the power set 
will contain eight elements and they are all listed here. Now the set inclusion relation is a partial order because why? Because remember, a set is a subset of itself that proves reflexivity. Tapos yung anti-symmetry, uh, ito yung uh, na-prove na natin, na prove na rin natin to when we talk about uh, subsets, right? Si A, uh, kapag ka napakita nyo na si A ay subset ni B, at saka si B ay subset ni A, automatically it follows that A is equal to B. And recall, this is exactly anti-symmetry. Ginagamit na natin to dun sa mga proofs natin dati, right? To prove equality of two sets, we show that one is a subset of the other and vice versa. Now, from there, we know that the subset relation is anti-symmetric. And the transitivity of subsets, we also discussed it before. Kapag ka si A ay subset ni B, okay? Tapos si B ay subset ni C. And then clearly, si A ay subset ni C, all right? Kasi si C yung buong ito, all right? So the uh, inclusion relation is not just a partial order on this set capital A, but it is also a partial order on any other set or in any other power set, okay? So ito yung mga natural orders. So I think we can say that uh, the, subs uh, the subset relation or the inclusion relation is the natural order for sets. Okay, natural sila kasi sila yung una mong maiisip. But tayong mga mathematicians, medyo may pagka mayabang tayo. Meron ng mga natural orders, pero gusto natin pag-aralan, paano kaya kapag ka binago ko yung partial, ah, yung ordering? Meron bang mga ibang ordering aside from the natural order of things? Tapos pag-aaralan natin, okay, kung meron pang ibang ordering, mapwera dun sa natural ordering, Kailangan lang natin mag-play by the rules. Kailangan lang pala yung order. Dapat may tatlong properties. Reflexive, uh, anti-symmetric, and transitive. Now, ano yung mga properties nila? So, we don't stop with the conventional wisdom or the natural uh, kind of things in math. We try to generalize it and see ano yung mga pwede pang order na i-define sa isang set. Okay? Now, I hope the next things will uh, give us some nice uh, examples. Uh, probably later, but before we uh, look at some more interesting examples of orders, let's uh, take a look at some terminologies first. Um, or maybe I can say a word about example eight first or exercise eight. Uh, this guy is uh, not a partial order, okay? Or row doesn't uh, partially order the set A, though it's a check nyo, uh, ito ay. Um, Ito ay uh, anti-symmetric, siya rin ay transitive, pero the thing is, it is not reflexive. All right, so take a look at the finer details of the definitions. Kailan nga ba siya nagiging reflexive? Remember that a relation will be reflexive if and only if um, x is related to x for all x in the set A. Yan yung pagiging reflexive. So the 1 comma 1 is in the relation, 2 comma 2 is in the relation, but 3 comma 3 is not in the relation row. The definition for reflexivity requires that every element of A must be related to itself. So for capital A to be reflexive, 3 comma 3 must be in the relation, uh, sorry, for the relation row on A to be reflexive, 3 comma 3 must be in row. But apparently, or obviously, it is absent from row. So, kaya siya hindi partial order. Okay? So, minsan, kapag kayong konteksto nung, nung relation ay clear, hindi na natin sinasabi kung ano yung set A. Kung walang set A na specified dun sa definition, pag hindi sinabi partial order siya kung saan set, we will always assume the largest, uh, we will always assume that the set A is the union of the domain and the range of row. Okay? So, kung hindi binanggit dito sa example na to, na ang set A ay si 1, 2, 3. Ang binigay lang ay si row. So, ang i natin ay si A ay union ng domain. Because when, collectahin nyo lang lahat ng first components, 1 and 2. 
union the range. So isasama ko lahat ng second components. Oops, si 1 nandun na. Si 2 andun na. So ang capital A ko lang ay 1, 2. And if capital A is just 1, 2, then rho is the identity relation on A. And we already know that the identity relation is a partial order. Okay? So that will make this, uh, this row to be a partial order. Or we can say that uh, um, the set 1, 2 together with row is a poset. Okay? Pero unfortunately, sa example na to, ang set A ay given to be the set containing 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, this relation row is not the identity relation on A, and actually it is not even a partial order on A. Okay? So, uh, is that clear? Medyo dinaanan natin yung mga technical details. All right. Now, uh, some notations. Kapag ka arbitrary yung partial order, okay? Uh, ginagamit natin tong symbol na to instead na row lang. Kasi yung row na symbol, yung x row y, we use row for a generic relation. Tapos pinuprove pa natin kung si row ay equivalence relation, kung si row ay partial order. But if we want to uh, to have a generic partial order, we usually use the symbol. This is read as precedes or, yeah, this is uh, read as the precedes relation. And then as a matter of notation, if uh, we will use this symbol, if we know that we have a partial order, okay? So ito yung mga not conventional partial orders. So ito yung parang generic notation para sa kanila, okay? So, um, ibig sabihin si less than or equal to, pwede natin siyang isulat na ganyan na precedes relation. Or yung uh, inclusion, isa siyang example ng posibleng precedes relation. Pero ang hirap pala niyang isulat, no? Uh, yeah, ito yung magiging precedes, uh, uh, ito yung magiging notation natin for a generic partial order. So we say x precedes y. If x is related to y in a partial order, so dapat partial order na siya dapat, when you see this symbol, ibig sabihin si x ay related kay y where the relation is a partial order, or you can also read it as y dominates x. Okay? Pero I will probably stick with x precedes y para left to right yung pagbabasa. Okay? Now also, just a remark here, if uh, precedes partially orders the set A, then there are two possible cases. Either x precedes y, or x doesn't pre uh, precede y. So, meron tayong dalawang cases. Right? Now, this is one example of an interesting partial order that might not be conventional. So, consider natin si set A to be the set of all natural numbers. Okay? So, the set of natural numbers... Uh -huh. Okay, we define the relation precedes so that x precedes y if and only if x divides y. Ito yung relation. Ito yung rule of the game. Paano natin na, na, na determine kung si x iperprecede niya si y. So we say that x precedes y if and only if x divides y. And I think we have uh, discussed the, div uh, the divide relation before. That simply means that y is a multiple of x. Or y can be written as a natural number. Actually, uh, yes. Uh, a natural number times the element x. Medyo restricted pala to, no? Kasi yung uh, unang time na na-encounter na na natin yung divisibility relation ay sa mga integers. Ngayon, ibaba natin siya. Uh, gawin natin siyang relation lamang kay n, set of natural numbers. So, medyo mababago yung definition natin ng divisibility. We say x divides y, where x and y are natural numbers, if and only if y can be written as a natural number times the number x. Okay? For instance, we can say that 2 precedes 6, kasi si 6 pwedeng isulat as 3 times 2. 3 precedes 15 because 3 divides 15. 
In other words, 15 can be written as a multiple of 3. In fact, 15 is equal to 3 times 5. Okay, A is equal to 5. 17 uh, precedes 17, all right, because 17 divides 17. In other words, 17 can be written as 17 times 1. On the other hand, 3 doesn't precede uh, 8 because 8 cannot be written as a multiple of 3 via a natural number. That means there's no natural number such that 3 times that natural number will be equal to 8. Okay. 13 doesn't precede 5 because 5 clearly cannot be written as a natural number times 13. Kasi mas malaki pa yung nasa left kesa dun sa nasa kanan. And then 2 doesn't uh, precede 9 because 2 doesn't divide 9 because 9 cannot be written as 2 times another natural number. Okay, so that's the precedes relation that we'll be talking about in example 10. All right, but you can show that this is a partial order. Uh, bucket, dahinan natin yung proof. Uh, it is reflexive kasi kung kukuha ko ng kahit anong natural number, pwede ko siyang isulat as 1 times itself. 1 is a natural number, so therefore x precedes x for any natural number x. So therefore, reflexivity is satisfied. Now let's try uh, anti-symmetry. Okay? So anti-symmetry means kapag ka meron ako nito at meron ako nito, gusto kong ipakita na si x ay equal kay y. All right? That's what we'll try to prove here. Now, Okay lang to, kasi ang alam ko lang ay yung definition ng precede. So let's write down what we know from the definition. X precedes Y, so therefore, Y can be written as A times X for some natural number A. And then Y precedes X, so that means X can be written as Y times another natural number. All right? So definition lang, divides. Nasa assumption siya. Again, our goal here is to show that x is equal to y because our claim is that precedes is a partial order. Okay? So meron akong y equals ax. Pero alam ko si x, according dito sa pangalawa, ay pwede kong isulat as b times y. So yung x na to, okay, pwede ko siyang isulat na b times y. And so I will have y equals a times by. And then we know that multiplication is associative, so I can alter the grouping of the products on the left. So yung A times the product BY, pwede ko siyang isulat as product AB times Y. And what do we have here? Okay, We have Y being equal to ABY. And we know that AB being the product of two natural numbers is another natural number. So what's the only natural number that will give us this uh, equality, that y is equal to a, b, y, right? Remember, that will only be true if a times b is equal to 1, right? But a times b is equal to 1, but remember, a and b are natural numbers. So a times b is equal to 1 will only be possible if a and b are both equal to 1. Kasi nga, ang usapan si A at saka si B, mga natural numbers. Alam natin yung AB dapat maging equal kay 1. Pero ang tanging panahon na yung AB ay magiging equal kay 1, where A and B are both natural numbers, is that if A is equal to B, which is equal to 1. Alright? So kung si A at saka si B ay parehas 1, so ibig sabihin from here, Y is equal to 1 times X. So that means Y is equal to X. And that is sufficient to conclude that uh, it is anti-symmetric. Kasi napakita na natin na si x ay equal kay y. All right? Now, transitivity is uh, a little bit easier because we already seen this before when we, when we proved that uh, the divide relation is an equivalence relation. So, ang assumption mo naman dito iba. Si x ay related kay y at si y ay related kay z. Gamitin mo lang ulit yung definition ng divides. X precedes Y, so that means Y can be written as a multiple of X. And then Y precedes Z, so that means Z can be written as B times Y for some natural number B. And then gagamitin ulit natin yung substitution. 
So Z is equal to B times Y. So that means Z can be written as B times AX. Ginamit ko lang yung expansion para kay Y. And then I'll again use transitivity. Uh, I'll use the associativity of multiplication to regroup B times the product of AX to the product of B and A times X. So we'll have this. So look at this statement. We have Z equals B A X. B and A are both natural numbers. So B A is another natural number. So therefore Z is a multiple of X. So that means X precedes Z. All right. So that proves it is transitive. Okay. So since three, the three conditions are met, it's reflexive, symmetric, uh, anti-symmetric, and uh, transitive, then we say that the precedes relation is a partial ordering on M. I think there's a typo here. Uh, yung conclusion that puts a part two is anti-symmetric. All right. Any uh, questions with that, guys? So I hope that's clear. Uh, I'll just ask uh, you now for a little favor. Um, for those who have classes at 10 a.m., you can leave right now. Uh, but I want to finish this uh, this module now. So I'll just continue on blabbering things here uh, until matapos ko yung worksheet, uh, itong study guide. Uh, if you have to go, it's perfectly fine. I don't expect anybody to stay. I can do a monologue after all of you leave. But I'll keep the recording. Uh, I'll keep uh, Teams recording. Para later, pwede nyo na lang panoorin etong part na to, yung uh, na miss nyo na part ng session for today. But if you don't have any classes or don't have anything to do uh, at 10 a.m., then you're perfectly fine to stay. But I understand if you guys all need to leave. Uh, balikan nyo na lang yung recording. Para lang medyo kakaunti na yung hahabulin natin next time. Tapos salata na na medyo nagmamadali ako na no? mag uh, mag-recording ako ngayon nung natitira and then uh, hindi ako masyado nagpapa-recite. Sorry guys about that. But I really need to finish 101 but I don't want to make a haphazard discussion. All right? So I hope that's okay. So uh, yeah, I think I can continue now. Uh, this will just be a couple more definitions, I think. Uh, okay. Definition 11. In definition 11, uh, we say the two elements in a partially ordered set to be comparable if either X precedes Y or Y precedes X. So kapag ka pwede ko silang sort of compare using the precedes relation, then we say they are comparable. Okay. Otherwise, they, they are not comparable or they are incomparable. Okay. Now, Parang siguro at the back of your minds, uh, paano magkakaroon ng dalawang elements na incomparable? Uh, remember, ang definition ng pagiging comparable kapag ka si X precedes Y, uh, si Y precedes X. So alam mo kung sino yung nauuna kay X at saka kay Y dun sa ordering. You know who precedes who or who dominates which. Okay? Pag hindi mo alam or the relation doesn't say Kung sino sa kanilang dalawa ang nauuna, then they are not comparable. Or we say they are incomparable with each other. Well, it is possible to have two elements that are incomparable, even if you have opposite. Okay? Halimbawa sa set inclusion. Right? So halimbawa, kunin ko yung set 1, 2, 3. Uh, yung power set ng 1, 2, 3. At yung example natin kanina. Power set ng set containing... Uh, a, B, C, yata pala yun. Okay. Together with the inclusion relation. Yung pagiging subset, right? So we already shown that this is a poset. It's a partially ordered set with a set inclusion, the natural order for sets, right? Now, we say that uh, the set, the empty set is comparable to any other set and the power set. Kasi si uh, empty set, I sure tayo to be a subset of any set uh, X for all X. Kasi si power set, uh, si empty set, siya lagi ay nauuna sa kahit na ano pang element ng power set. Okay? 
So it precedes everything. So we say that the empty set is comparable to every other set in. Similarly, if I call this the set capital A, then the set A is comparable to every other set in the power set. Kasi siya ang superset ng kahit na anong set dun sa power set. So since this will dominate, the set A will dominate any other member of the power set, then that means A is comparable to every other set. Pwede ko siyang i-compare sa kahit na anong element ng power set. Tapos alam ko siya lagi yung mananalo. It doesn't matter kung siya lagi yung nananalo o siya lagi yung nagdodominate. Ang importante, alam mo kung siya yung nagdo-dominate o siya yung nag proceed sa isang element ng set. Alright? However, the set A, uh, the set containing A, remember, it's in the power set, and the set containing B, C are both in the power set, but they are not comparable. Hindi sila comparable. Bakit hindi sila comparable? Kasi the subset relation doesn't give us a clue of which of them precedes which. O sino yung nagdo-dominate kanino. Walang rule na dun sa subset relation na nagsasabi kung sino sa kanilang dalawa yung dominant o sino yung nagpe-precede. Kasi A, uh, the set containing A is not a subset of the set containing B. So therefore, A, or the set containing A, doesn't precede the set containing B, C. But at the same time, the set containing B, C is not a subset of the set containing A. Therefore, B, uh, the set containing B and C doesn't precede the set containing A. So there's no way we can determine which of them precedes the other or dominates the other. So, ibig sabihin sa set containing A at saka sa set containing B, C ay hindi comparable. Okay? There's no way or there's no rule in the partial order that we define that will tell us which precedes which. Alright? Okay, bayan guys? Now, I think this is the last part of uh, this module, uh, remark number 12. This is a way of representing... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a question from Esther. Uh, yung null set at A lang po yung comparable. Well, uh, I think yes, they are the only sets that are comparable to every other set. Remember yung comparability, I, uh, I determined by, uh, by pair. Bawat pair. Pukuha ka ng isang pair na, uh, isang pair ng mga elements ng set A, ano uh, nung, uh, nung kung saan mo dinefine yung relation, tapos makikita mo kung sila yung related, uh, comparable kay isa't isa. Halimbawa, yung set containing A at saka yung set containing A, B, they are comparable. Because we can determine which of them precedes which. Uh, si set containing A is a subset of A containing, uh, set containing AB. So that means set containing A precedes the set containing AB. For this pair, we know which comes first. So, ibig sabihin, comparable silang dalawa. What I'm trying to say kanina with the, with the null set and the power set itself, uh, as saka yung set A itself, ay sila lang yung comparable sa lahat. Okay? So, si set A at saka si set containing A, B, sila ay comparable sa isa't isa. Pero there could be some sets na hindi comparable kay set containing A. For instance, a set containing BC ay hindi comparable kay set A. Pero si set containing A ay comparable sa set containing A, B. Yun nga lang ang magandang property ni null set at saka ni set A. Sila ay comparable sa lahat ng iba pang sets dun sa power set. Okay? So I hope that answers your question, Esther. So yung pagiging comparable, tinitake natin siya uh, by pair. Bibigyan ko kayo ng pair. I de determine nyo kung sila ay comparable or hindi. Okay? Uh, yes, Gad? Sir, so basta element or subset po siya na isang set, comparable po siya. Ganun po ba? Uh, be careful. Dapat ibibigay mo sa akin yung pair. 
kapag ka yung isang set ay subset nung isa pang set, silang dalawa ay comparable. Pero kung hindi sila subset ng isa't isa, kung si A, kung yung first set ay hindi subset ng pangalawang set, tapos yung pangalawang set ay hindi rin subset ng first set, so ibig sabihin hindi sila comparable. Kasi hindi ko alam sa kanila kung sino yung mauuna dun sa listahan. Okay? Okay, sir. Alright. So, yeah. Hindi siya generic yung pag-check. Chine-check natin siya pair by pair. Kaya ang definition niya ay kukuha ka muna ng dalawang elements. Para mag-decide ka kung sila ay comparable or hindi, dapat alam mo kung sino yung nauuna sa kanila. Which precedes which. Ah, yes, Victor, you have a question? So, sir, um, hindi siya mga, hindi siya provable sa mga, ano, uh, what do you call that, mga universal, ganun. Ah, sa mga generic na sets? Yeah, like mga for all, ganito, prove that it is uh, comparable, ganun. Uh, Or pwede like, naman pa rin? Pwede pa rin naman, uh, depende sa pagkaka-phrase, kasi halimbawa, pwede kong ipaprove na sa subset relation, ang set, ang empty set ay comparable sa lahat ng elements ng power set. And the proof is easy. You can say that the empty set is a subset of any other set. So empty set is a subset of set X for all elements, uh, for all sets X in the power set. That's complete proof. Pero halimbawa, pwede ko sa inyong ipahanap sino yung mga comparable kay A, uh, kay set containing A. So kukolektahin nyo lang lahat ng subsets at lahat ng supersets ni set containing A. Sila yung magiging comparable kay set containing A. Pero yung mga sets na hindi subset ni, ni set containing A, or hindi rin supersets ni set containing A, hindi sila mga comparable kay A and B, na kay set containing A. Now perhaps it would be easier to check comparability, tingnan natin siya visually. And, and there's a nice visual tool for us to check comparability And actually, not just that, but to completely characterize uh, posets or partial orders on a set. And that's what we call a poset or a lattice diagram. So this shows, uh, actually, this characterizes a partially ordered set. Uh, ginagawa lang natin, gumagawa tayo ng drawing or diagram where each element of the, um, which ele uh, each element of the relation is represented by a dot or a vertex in our graph or in our diagram. And there would be a, uh, a line connecting two sets if they are compatible. Okay? And then usually simsulat natin siya vertically. Those that uh, we write, uh, if X precedes Y, then we draw the representative of Y on top of the representative of X. So tingnan natin paano ginagawa yung poset diagram and how can it help for us to uh, completely understand comparability of two elements. Okay, so ganito yung example. So halimbawa, meron tayong, uh, balikan natin yung set uh, example 7. Uh, Medyo malayo pala yung example 7. Ano nga ba yan? Okay, so ito yung sa example 7. Meron tayo, uh, ito rin pala yung example na ginamit ko kanina. Set containing uh, ABC, siya si capital A. Kinuha ko lahat ng subsets ni uh, set A. Tapos dinefine ko yung inclusion relation as the subset relation. Okay? Tingnan natin ano yung itsura ng poset diagram. Okay. So sabi natin lahat ng elements ng set A ay bibigyan ko ng isang representative. Siguro ay construct ko siya from the beginning. All right. So remember, may walong elements yung power set. You start with set containing A, B, C. And then yung mga sets na dalawahan yung laman, A, B. Um, what else? Um, A, C. At saka um, B, C. Right? Tama ba? Ito na lang yung mga elements na tatlo yung laman. Or may na-miss ba ka? 3 uh, power 2, sa so tatlo nga lang naman siya. A, B, A, C, at saka B, C. Tapos ano pa, yung mga, tat, yung mga isahan lang yung laman, yung mga singletons. Set containing A, set containing B, set containing C. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 7 now. I'm expecting 8. So yung last element ng power set ay the empty set. 
So ito yung walong elements nung partial uh, nung, nung set na pina partial order natin. Okay? Then the partial ordering is inclusion. All right? Sabi dun sa poset diagram, pag i-draw mo yung poset diagram, kapag ka si x precedes y, dapat si x ay nasa ilalim ni y dun sa diagram. Kaya ganito yung pagkakadrawing ko kasi alam po na na subset relation yung poset. So yung mga pinakamaliit na set, sila dapat ay nasa ilalim. Kasi mas malaki yung chance na sila ay magiging subsets. Kasi sabi nga natin, x precedes y if and only if x is a subset of y. Yan yung definition ng relation. So ibig sabihin, mas maliit yung set, mas malaki yung chance na siya yung magperproceed dun sa mas malaking set. Kaya ganito yung pagkakadrawing ko niyan. Alright? Now, we know that the empty set is a subset of the set containing A. That's why I will be drawing a line between these two elements of uh, the set we are ordering, right? And then since the empty set precedes the set containing A, the set containing A should be drawn on top of the empty set. Kaya nasa itasha, all right? Similarly, the set containing B dominates the empty set, so there should be a line between the two, and the set containing B must be on top of the uh, empty set. So, dapat nasa kabilang level na siya. And then this will be true. Oops. So, ito yung first level ng poset diagram. Also, the set containing A precedes the set containing AB because the set containing A is a subset of the set containing AB. Also, the set containing A is a subset of the set containing AC. So they are comparable to each other kasi alam ko kung sino yung nagpreproceed at sino yung nagdominate sa kanilang dalawa. However, the set containing BC and the set containing A, we said they are not comparable because neither is a subset of the other. All right? So ibig sabihin, wala akong line na idodraw sa pagitan nila. Pag wala kayong din draw na line sa pagitan nila or there's no path, to go from here until there, then ibig sabihin hindi sila comparable. Kasi hindi natin alam sino dapat yung nauuna sa kanilang dalawa dun sa listahan. Alright? Though in the post diagram, I put this one on top, pero hindi ibig sabihin this precedes this guy. Kasi dapat may line na nagko-connect sa kanila or there's a way how to reach this guy starting from the bottom up para masabi na ipinipreceed niya. Okay? Ideally, I should have drawn a line from here till here, okay? Kasi alam ko na si empty set precedes the set containing AB. But to simplify the, uh, the diagram and to take advantage of the transitivity, I know that the empty set is a subset of the set containing A. So the empty set precedes the set containing A. But the set containing A also precedes the set containing AB. Then I know that by transitivity, the empty set must precede the set containing AB. That's why I was tempted to draw a line between the two. Pero to make the diagram simpler and to take advantage non transitive property, pwede ko na lang sabihin na, okay, kaya ko rin namang marating si set containing AB kung magsisimula ako kay empty set going strictly from the bottom up. Mula ko dito, dadaan ako sa line na to, Tapos tatawid ako sa line na yon. There's a path coming from the empty set to the set containing AB from bottom to top. All right? So, ibig sabihin, comparable pa rin ito dito. If you look at the diagram, because I can reach the set containing AB down from the empty set. Okay? And then, if I'll continue the, the, the post-set diagram, let's see. Oops, sorry. Uh, what happened? Oh, na-shift ko yata siya. Okay, uh -huh. there we go. Okay, so there's a line going there. And then there is a line going there. This one should be connected there. This one should be connected there. And they should be connected to each other. Okay. Now I say that the empty set is comparable to every other set because I can travel down from the empty set upward to reach any other set. 
So kung gusto ko itong ma-reach mula kay empty set, dadaan ako dito. Tapos dadaan ako doon. That's fine. Ito, dadaanan ko to mula kay empty set. Kasi mula rito, pwede akong dumaan doon. Pero there's no path from bottom up that will make me reach the set containing BC coming from the set containing A. Wala akong madadaanan. Kung dito ako dadaan, the only way up is there. Oh, nalampasan ko na si BC. Pag dito ako dadaan, oops, pataas na uli ako. There's the only path coming from AC forward. Never kung madadaanan si AC. So, ibig sabihin, si set containing A at si set containing BC ay hindi comparable sa isa't isa. Alright? By just looking at the poset diagram. Alright? So, yeah. Uh, yun yung konsepto ng poset diagram. Kaya mas maganda rin siyang tool para i-analyze yung, uh, yung mga posets, so, ang mga partially ordered sets. Alright? So, any clarifications on the construction of a poset diagram? Okay. I hope um, nasasay masasayahan kayong gawin ito kasi it's uh, it's uh, it's really a nice exercise. Though magiging problematic siya pag napakaraming elements ng set na pina partial order mo. Imagine having a set capital A to have say 50 elements. Tapos magdo-draw ka ng poset diagram, medyo mahirap siyang gawin. All right? But for sets of little elements, it would be uh, a nice exercise. So let's say example 14. For example 14, let's consider the set A consisting of the following elements. Uh, uh, questions from a uh, question from Victor. Pwede ba magkaroon ng dead ends? Yes, it is really possible. Siguro na realize mo when I flashed example 14. So example 13 kasi walang parang walang dead end. Ang dead end lang ay yung magkabilang dulo, top and bottom. Pero posible na merong mga loose ends dun sa mga posets diagram. And we cannot do anything about that. Halimbawa, set containing A, I 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Alright? Now, ang partial ordering niya ay divisibility. We say that X precedes Y if and only if X divides Y. Or equivalently, we say that y can be written as a times x for some integer, okay? So it's indivisibility. Of course, uh, all right, drawing ka dyan ng diagram, la, sulat mo lahat ng elements ni a. Minsan mahirap mag-decide kung paano mo siya i-order muna yung mga elements. Kailangan mo minsan manghula. Sino yung pupunta sa level na to and so on. But for sure, c1 ay nasa ilalim. Kasi C1 ay divisor ng lahat ng numbers, right? Because uh, 1 precedes every y. Because y can be written as y times 1. So C1 comparable siya sa lahat ng elements kasi divisor siya ng lahat ng natural numbers. Alright? So I'll put 1 at the bottom. And then C12, siya yung mas malaking chance na maging uh, dominant sa lahat ng elements. Kasi siya yung pinakamalaki. So yung mga mas maliliit, sila yung may chance na maging divisor. Yung mas malaking number. So I'll put 12 somewhere up there, alright? And see what will happen, okay? Now, C2. So C2, alam ko, dinidivide siya ni 1, okay? Pero C2, divisor siya ni 6, 4, 10. Actually, divisor siya nung lahat mapwera kay 1, Okay? So, kaya meron siyang lines dyan. Tapos, hindi ko na din rowing yung line from 2 to 8. Because I can minimize the number of lines that I will draw by taking advantage of the fact that 4 precedes 8. So, there would be a line from 4 to 8. All right? And I can use that line to reach 8 coming from 2. Because that should be true kasi I know that 2 precedes 8. So I can take advantage of that bridge uh, between 2 and 8 via 4. Kasi nga, transitive naman yung partial order. Okay? Same thing goes here. 2 divides 6. So there's a line there. 6 divides 12. So nandon yung line between 6 and 12. Obviously, 2 divides 12. But I don't need to draw that extra line because I can reach 12 either via 6 or via 4. Pwedeng yun yung mga paths na daanan. 
2 divides 10 also, but 2 doesn't divide uh, 10, doesn't divide any other number in the set A. 10 doesn't divide 12. Uh, yeah, yun lang naman yung possible niyang i-divide. Lahat ng mas malaki sa kanya. But obviously, I cannot write 12 as 10 times something. So there's no line between them. And you can see that there's no bridge. There's no path that I can walk from 10 upward up to 12. So ibig sabihin si 10 at saka si 12 ay hindi comparable. Kasi neither 10 precedes 12 nor 12 precedes 10. Okay, so hindi sila dalawa comparable. Same thing goes for 12 and 8. They're not comparable to each other because 12 doesn't divide 8 nor 8 div uh, and 8 doesn't divide 12. Tapos kitang kita siya sa poset diagram. Kasi hindi ako makakapaglakbay mula kay 8 papunta kay 12 o mula kay 12 papunta kay 8 uh, using a, top, uh, a bottom to top maneuver. So wala akong pwedeng daanan. Okay. So it will take some practice to uh, to draw the poset diagram. Kasi gusto mo medyo clear yung presentation ng poset diagram. You want to minimize the number of lines used by taking advantage of uh, taking advantage of the transitivity of the relation. Okay. Tapos uh, hindi siya uniform. Pwede si eight dito mo ilagay. Pwede mo siyang ilagay dyan. All right. Ang nagmamatter lang ay dapat Sure, sure kayo na yung mga incomparable elements ay hindi nyo mapupuntahan via a, 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 a bottom-to-top maneuver. Tapos wala kayong na-miss na comparable elements. Okay? So kayo yung bahala paano nyo i-drawing yung poset diagram. But the ideal poset diagram would be using the minimal number of uh, lines. And the lines must be clear uh, if possible. Hopefully, hindi sila nag-cross with each other para madaling matrace. Pero minsan, impossible gawin yung katulad dito sa post-it diagram natin kanina. Uh, hindi natin ma-avoid na mag-cross itong dalawa. Uh, possibly, uh, except if you will allow curved, line, curved lines. So, posible rin naman na ito ay drawing nyo ng paganito. Alright? Instead of, uh, hold on, hindi pala yun. Uh, Alright. Ito, instead na paganyan, pwede mo siyang i-drawing ng paganyan. Doesn't matter for me. Hindi kailangan straight lines yung ipando-drawing sa poset diagram. Uh, if you want to avoid yung crossings. Pero, ma-prove nyo pag nag-graph theory kayo na uh, hindi lahat ng graphs ay kayang i-drawing without overlapping lines. So, but that's for graph theory. Pero, yun nga. Yun yung sa poset diagram. Ang mahalaga lamang ay at least mapakita nyo clearly kung ano yung itsura ng magiging post at diagram by, again, minimizing the number of lines used by taking advantage of the transitive property and also making it prettier in a sense na madaling i-digest or i-discern uh, uh, kung uh, comparable ba ang isang element sa isang element or which element precedes another. Okay? And then, yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, huh, let's see. Okay, and I think we are good. Uh, let's see. Oh, before we end, uh, isalaman definition, pahabal na definition. Okay. So, what is a total order? A total order is a partial order. So, partial order muna siya, such that all elements are compatible. Yan yung gusto sabihin ng definition 16. So kung meron kang poset, tapos for every element x and y, we know that either x precedes y or y precedes x whenever x and y are distinct elements, then we say it's a total order. Or it's a simple order or it's a linear ordering. So kapag ka lahat ng elements ay comparable, binigyan kita ng kahit anong pair, ng elements ng poset. Tapos, sure ka na yung isa, iperproceed niya yung isa. Then, we say we have a total order. Kaya ang tawag sa kanya ay total. Kasi alam mo kung sino yung mauuna sa lahat ng elements ng set. Kaya rin simple, kasi mas simple yung, um, yung poset diagram niya. Kasi kung totally ordered yung set, ang itsura lang ng poset diagram niya ay isa lamang chain. Kasi lahat ay comparable, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, you can reach one uh, element 
from any other element using a bottom-up maneuver. So, ibig sabihin, uh, yung magiging post-it diagram mo lamang ay isang straight line. Okay, kaya ang tawag din sa kanya ay linear ordering. Kasi lahat sila ay comparable. So, ibig sabihin, uh, walang magkakaparehas ng level. So, laging may nauna at may nauhuli. An example of a total order would be the less than or equal to relation in R. Kasi pag binigyan kita ng kahit anong dalawang real numbers, alam mo kung sino yung mas maliit sa kanilang dalawa. All right? And the post-it diagram actually for the post-it or for the total order R together with the natural ordering ay yung real number line. Ito yung post-it niya. Ito yung lattice or post-it diagram. Actually, hindi na nga lang siya post-it diagram. Siya ay total order diagram na kasi yung uh, partial order na to ay total order. Kasi alam natin na kahit anong dalawang real numbers, alam natin kung sino yung mas maliit sa kanilang dalawa. Tapos kung gusto mong i-drawing yung post-it diagram, kunin mo lang yung real number line. Kasi halimbawa, kumuha ako ng 0, tapos nandito si 1, dahil si 0, actually dapat pala ay ano, no? dapat ay vertical nga pala yung ating uh, uh, lattice diagram. So pwede ko siyang i-draw this way. Kung ito si 0, tapos alam natin nandiyan si 1. Dahil si 1 ay nasa ibabaw ni 0, we know that 0 is less than or equal to 1. Or 0 precedes 1. Tapos si negative 1 million, and dito siya sa ilalim. So we know that negative 1 million precedes 0 by just looking at the post-it diagram. Okay? And then the post-it diagram, uh, post diagram looks like a chain. So, ila, isa lamang siyang isang diretso. So, para lang siyang isang actual line, isang straight line. So, that's why it's called a linear order. Total order siya kasi lahat ng elements ay comparable. Okay? Uh, let's see what are the other uh, natural orders. Uh, uh, some total orders. So, example ko na to, yung natural order kay R. And then, uh, yung divides relation ay uh, hindi total order. Okay? Kay n. Kasi hindi lahat ng elements ay comparable. So, halimbawa, si 5 at saka si 12 ay hindi comparable. So, if you look at the post-it diagram for uh, for that, uh, uh, the post-it diagram for that partial order near 5 and 12, kung nandito si 5, tas nandito si 12, walang line na magko-connect between kay 5 at saka kay 12. So, ibig sabihin, they should be uh, approximately at the same level on the post-it diagram, no one comes on top of each other kasi nga uh, hindi naman sila related sa isa't isa. So, possibly meron magbe-branch out yan, magbe-branch out din yan sa taas. Pero there's no line joining the two so we cannot draw a chain or we cannot draw a straight line as the post-it diagram. So, hindi na, siya, uh, hindi na siya total order. And again, it suffices either to look at the uh, post-it diagram, or just look at, uh, or just mention that 5 and 12 are not comparable to each other. Okay? Pero, there's a nice example of a post uh, of a total order using the divide relations. Halimbawa, yung mga powers ni 2. Yung mga powers ni 2 yung nasa set A natin. Tapos, ang partial order natin ay divisibility. Okay? So, kung idodrawing ko yung partial order na yun, so si 2 ay nasa ilalim, tapos si 2 ay comparable kay 4, because 2 divides 4, tapos 4 divides 8, so ito yung ginagawa ko ng post-it diagram, okay? And then, hindi ko na kailangang idrawing yung 2 to 8, because uh, though we know that 2 divides 8, but 2 divides 4, and 4 divides 8, then I can use the transitive property na dumiretso na lang doon. So, no extra line needed. All right? Because I can reach uh, 8 coming from 2 from a bottom-up maneuver. Okay? Tapos, uh, 8, susunod ay si 16. And dito rin siya. Note that 2 divide 16, 4 divide 16, 8 divide 16, and then 32, and so on. And that will be true for all elements of... Uh, uh, the set of powers of 2. All right. And then if you look at the POSIT diagram, if you will imagine what will happen if I completely draw the POSIT diagram, it will just be a chain. 
it would be a straight line upward. Okay. So by just looking at the, the POSET diagram, we can say now, oh, okay, it's a linear order because it's a lattice diagram or it's POSET diagram. It's just a straight line. Okay. It's a linear order. It's a total order because all elements are comparable with each other. Okay. And then that will give us a nice criteria here. We say that uh, the relation in example 14 is not a total order because hindi straight line yung kanyang POSET diagram. Okay. This guy, the set inclusion relation on the power set of the set containing A, B, C is also not a total order simply because you can say na, ah, hindi lahat ng elements nila ay comparable because the set containing A and the set containing B, C are not comparable to each other. Or if you are more visual, you can present to me the, the POSET diagram and say, sir, look, oh, yung POSET diagram niya ay hindi straight line. So hindi siya total order. Okay, so I think that's all that I want to discuss with partial orders here. And it's a bit of a miracle because natapos ko yung, uh, yung isang study guide within a week. So uh, yeah, actually less than a week. I say one and a half hours lang yung ginugol ko today. But I hope that's not too much of an info overload. I thought you can handle it. So kaya nag overtime na lang ako today. Uh, but any questions from you guys? Uh, you can try drawing POSET diagrams here. For example, uh, you have example 19. Or if you want to look at more examples, uh, pwede nyo tingnan yung links na provided dun sa study guide. So marami dyan links or additional readings that you want to look at. All right, so uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, mukhang wala naman kayong questions. So just uh, uh, prepare for the problem set, would, which would be live on Canvas tomorrow at 8. And it will be due on the 13th, uh, right before midnight. Uh, only three problems. Sa sabi ko na yung problem number one, meron siguro siyang two or three sub items involved, but that shouldn't be too hard. And then there would be some proving, uh, two proving questions, uh, properties of relations and functions na uh, kasama dun sa problem set. So yeah, just expect uh, three problems. And hopefully you can do that. Uh, one problem for probably tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, half a problem each on when, on Saturday and Sunday, and then one full problem on Monday, and then you'll you'll be good. All right. So yeah. Balita ko kina bahan kayo kasi hindi ko pala napalitan sa canvas yung deadline. Sorry about that, guys. Tapos hindi ko din yung laptop ko nung nagbakasyon ako nung weekend, so hindi ko siya upload But hopefully your lab instructors advised you uh, yesterday, uh, on last Monday. But yeah, I apologize for the inconvenience. So with that said, I think we're good for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, okay, and then let's see each other again on Tuesday. All right, bye guys. Oh, by the way, don't forget to attend your uh, lab sessions on Monday because I will ask them to discuss one thing. And then I will also upload uh, a... Uh, a video recording for the for half of the topic for the next study guide. Yun na lang yung papanoorin nyo uh, over the weekend or before you come to the, your labs on Monday. And then we will start with, I think, Piano's action on Tuesday's lecture. All right? So yun na lang yung medyo kailangan kong gawin para makahabol for Math 101. Okay? So thank you, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Stay safe. All right. Salamat.